But I have been astonished and silenced many times over. I've been closing sales for years, but the amount that I can learn from this dude over here is absolutely psychotic. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Kat. What's up, guys? Glad to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you here, homie. So, Kaz, the way we're going to be doing this call right now is we're going to do a little bit of a conversation. I have about five, six questions that I want to ask you that are going to, um, that we can dive in deeper with micro questions in between each of them. And we can just go ahead and communicate based off of our experiences back and forth and any tips that you have that you can share with us as well. Let's do it, bro. Cool. Let's jump right into this. So, how do you structure a sales call? Right. Um, so that's probably the most important thing that comes about when anyone asks anything about sales. Um, the first thing is the way I structure it is I don't really have something that I'm going to ask exactly. Um, I have like a general understanding of which way I'll go, but typically it's question based, very heavily question based. And I will use those questions to craft an offer on the fly and then I'll deliver the offer. The way I structure it is that I have some key points that I want to get out, out of the, the prospect, uh, which is urgency, uh, what is their budget, what is their decision makers, uh, what are their decision makers, and uh, what are some possible objections they might find, I, I might think that they might throw away. Um, I'm gonna try to get those out of the system. Now, I don't have like, okay, I have to get urgency before budget, I have to get budget before decision makers, None of that. Typically what happens is I like to make the sales call as conversational as possible. So I'll start off with questions and I'll see where they lead, lead me into. If they lead me into something, they're complaining about budget early on, then I'll quickly use that and be like, oh, really? Like, so just out of the blue here, like what exactly is like something you're comfortable with here? This might, might not be set in stone, but I, I'll just get that kind of understanding from the get-go. Or they'll be like, oh man, we've been working on let's say this project and trying to find a solution for uh, six months, then I know it's my cue to get the urgency stuff out of the way. Like, okay, so you've been working for six months. Are you going to go another six months or are you going to want, do you want to go another six days or do you want to get some solution within six hours? So these are the key points that I look for in the call. And the way I look for them is if there's anything relevant that I can tie back to this topic, I will always bring it up immediately. I won't wait for the last second. So typically it goes on questions uh, and those topics will be sprinkled into the questions. Then I will craft my offer with the three key points or four key points that they give me throughout the questions and tailor it accordingly. And then I'll deliver the offer and most likely they won't have any objections. I want to handle the objections before and that's through questioning the right things and answering them. So afterwards they can't be like oh you didn't answer this because you already did does that kind of make sense yeah absolutely so right now the way i'm basically doing my sales calls is i actually pre-qualified them right i used twitter so it's a little bit different than people who are cold email outreaching or getting inbound leads and all as well but i have um, the Twitter account and I have a form where I actually ask people questions to pre-qualify them and through that pre-qualification I retouch up on those questions on the call and I, I, I use those questions to actually jab them in and get those cues that you're talking about and those pain points and leverage that to create the custom offer. Do you have, do, do you, uh, have some sort of qualification process as well for your calls? Right. What you're doing is basically inbound, right? And when you do inbound, you have a significant amount of leverage over the client's interest or, or the prospect's interest. If you're doing outbound, let's say, for example, cold email, LinkedIn, Facebook groups, whatever it may be, if you're doing those and if you send a potential prospect who doesn't know you existed like five minutes ago, um, a very detailed form, I can pretty much guarantee you nine times out of 10, they're going to ghost you. And it's not even like they're not a serious prospect or not. It's basically, they just don't know you well enough to care that much where they spend 10 minutes going into a form. So the best way I have found is when you do like, let's say very cold, cold outreach, um, you want to get them onto a quick intro call, like call it a five minute intro call, call it a 10 minute intro call. And in that intro call, you just basically take what the questions you want to ask in the form and then put that into the call itself. It's, it's quick and easy. 
and it gets the job done. And then you want to book for a much deeper call, which is like a 30 minute or 45 minute call, call it um, a strategy call or call it um, a demo call, whatever it is. So that's the way I like to structure it. But every time there's inbounds, we always send like a form first thing and we can get an idea. And then we move, we skip the intro call and go directly into um, the, the actual sales call itself. Okay, so in that cold email, how do you get them into an intro call? Because I know a lot of people who just deny it. Do you just say like, hey, you, you ready for a quick, or like to hop in a quick chat, five minute chat, whatever it is? 